and welcome to editing in my creative studio. So in today's editing session, I have been working on editing these roses that have been growing in my garden. It's that time of year here in Maryland. I'm on the East Coast in the US and these roses have just been stunning. I wanted to capture them as they grow, which is as a cluster of roses. And so I pulled out my Lens Baby Velvet 56 Lens and I chose the Lens Baby Velvet for two reasons. One, I like the focal length so that I could capture the full view of these flowers. But I also love the softness that you can get with this lens. So with the Lens Baby Velvet, when you shoot below F5.6, you get this nice glow around the edges. However, with these kind of full... Um, almost smushy roses. I mean, these petals would just fall if you grabbed a hold of them. I really didn't like not having enough detail. So what I did is I shot the image at two different f-stops. So this image, you can see all the soft glow. This was shot at probably f4. And then I took my lens up to f5.6. I was still able to get a little softness around the edges, but a lot more detail. So you can see the more more detail, especially in this rose. And I think that a little bit more detail with this cluster of roses is a much stronger image. But I don't like all the busyness, so I want to add a little bit of that Lens Baby effect, and I can do that here in post-processing. So what I did is I made some basic adjustments to this image. I will show you before and after. It's very subtle. Main thing I did was open up the shadows a little bit down here. I did add a little bit of a vignette and then I increased the saturation on the orange color to just give it a little pop. Very, very subtle. Now what I want to do is take the image into Photoshop and in today's creative editing, I want to talk to you about adding blur to make your image look a little bit more like um, have a creative touch, but still keep your details. So let's jump over to Photoshop. I've already opened up this image. I did open it as a smart object. Now, when you're working with blur filters, it's really important that your layer is a smart object. It'll make it easy to make adjustments. And I'll explain that in just a second. So I always like to duplicate my background layer. You can turn it off if you want. To duplicate, you can do Command or Control and the letter J. So the first thing I want to do is work on adding that blur. So I'm going up to Filter, Blur. Now there are so many options here and there are several that I love to use. Of course, I think the most popular blur feature in Photoshop is the Gaussian Blur. But today I wanna to show you a different option and that's using Box Blur. So Box Blur gives a little bit of texture and almost like lines going down. It's as if it's making small boxes throughout your image. I'm going to take it all the way up so you can see that texture. I really like that. I think it makes things in nature look really natural. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. I think around 75% is going to work nice. So I want it to have that soft glow, but not be, not be fake looking. So maybe around 65%. I think that's working nice. So let's click OK. What's great about having it as a smart filter, it adds a layer mask for you. Now, what I like to do is use my mask. I'm gonna make sure my brush foreground color is black. I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm gonna make sure that my brush is soft and it is. And I'm gonna start at 100% opacity. Your opacity slider is up here at the top. And what I'm gonna do is come in and remove some of that blur on the centers of these flowers. And I'm starting at 100% and I'm just going in this main area. Now, what I instantly want to do now that I've just added a little bit of that 100% is I'm gonna take the opacity down. And this is why I like to use the brush for this feature or this application. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to about 55%. Now I'm going to start removing more of that blur going around my main subject, these roses. And again, I'm just going around the edges and I am going to remove this in this area. 
come down. Now I want to take the opacity down to about 28%. And I'm just going to go around the edges to really make it soft so it's not just a hard stop. And you can go over it multiple times to remove more of it. Now that I've done that activity, I'm going to go ahead and take it back to 100% one more time. And I'm just going to pop anywhere. I just want to make sure that I got the detail in the center, maybe in this little guy. All right, now I'm going to take the opacity. And I actually want to flip my brush to white. I'm going to take the opacity to about 22%. I'm going to go around these edges. Now I flipped it to white, which is going to reveal the blur underneath. So I just want to come around, add a little bit of that blur as if it was a circle around my image just to keep it really soft and natural. So I don't want it to look like we added a fake blur. I really want it to look like I used a fun lens and added some of those fun effects. All right, and then you just want to kind of, you can turn it on and off. That's why I like to keep that other layer. So this is before, this is after. So I think it's really nice how it's softened around. And usually what I do is take a minute, take a break, go get some coffee, come back, and I'll look at it again and see if there's some places where I want to bring out some more detail. So I'm going to flip it back to black. Maybe just bring out a little bit more detail in this and this guy, let me make sure I'm on my mask. Now, the benefit of the smart filter, the smart object, is I can double click on this box blur. Now that I've got it masked, and it will take me directly to the menu, and I could increase this blur. Look at that. Or I could even decrease it. So even though I've got my mask, now I could play with this blur. How much do I want? How little do I want? So maybe you only want, you know, 20%, 25%. 40% is actually very nice. Let's take it up to 50, maybe halfway there, 46%. I kind of like that. But if you decide you want more or less, all you have to do is click on the words box blur, double click it, and it's going to open up that menu for you. So that's the reason I like to do this with a smart object when I'm going to use the blur filters. All right, so I really like how this is turning out so far. Um, I do see a little bit of maybe some ghosting around this flower. So I'm going to go back to my mask and let's take this opacity, maybe about 25%. And I'm just going to go around this edge, clean that up. And I can go over it multiple times. I don't want, I don't want anything that looks fake on here. I want it to look really nice and natural. So I'm just cleaning that up. I can flip it back now and go around and just make sure there's a little softness without having that kind of color glow. And let's increase our opacity. Now I'm on the white brush. This is where it adds the blur. And I'm just going to go around that green area and come up. You can see that's where it's making the mistake. So I'm going to flip it back to black. And I'm just going to remove that because I don't think it is needed. And I think it makes the flower look, um, look kind of weird there. So that's what I say. Take some time. Um, if you see a little bit of where that blur is making almost a ghosting effect, you can just go in and um, take it at maybe a 50% opacity and just um, remove it around the edges. Sometimes that happens with flowers. I see it up here as well. So let's just go in, maybe take this up a little bit more. I'm on black now because I want to um, reveal what's underneath. So I'm just cleaning those edges up just a little bit. I think that looks better. So that's just a watch out when you're working with any blur filter. Um, it can do that. So you just don't want lines and kind of that weirdness. There's some more of it right around the edges. Let's come in and 
rid of that. Let me take this opacity up. Clean that one up too. I think it's off of there, but it still, still looks a little bit blurry to me. Um, I've got it at 100%. Let's flip it. Yeah, you can see that blur right there is bringing out some color. So what I'm going to do is flip it back and I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, so we're just going to keep that nice and clean. All right, now, so that's adding that blur. I think you can see the benefit of that. If you shoot an image at a higher f-stop and you've got a lot of busyness, just go in and add a blur. And try box blur. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Now, the next thing I want to do is I do want to clean up this dead bloom. And I'm so excited to show you, if you haven't played with it, the remove tool that is new here in Photoshop. I want to see how well it does in cleaning this area up. So let's go ahead and do a clean stamped layer. And I'm going to do Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. That's going to give us a clean stamped layer. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come over and from my menu, I have to click these three dots and I'm going to get the remove tool. This is a new feature, so make sure you have done your Photoshop updates. And um, this video is in June of 2023, so make sure you've done those updates. All right, so I'm going to come in and I am just going to go around the edge of this flower and come in. And I stopped too soon. If you stop, it's going to process it. So we'll just let it process and see what it does. Um, if you continue to draw, then it will. It, I could have drawn the whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it process. And we'll see what it does. I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep it or delete. Now... This has a lot of blur on it. It may not recognize it. So we will try it and then we'll come back and maybe remove the blur on it and try it again. So we'll just, this is an experiment that we'll do together. So while it's processing, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. I'd love any comments. And if you're not a subscriber, would love to have you subscribe to get notice of our videos. I love creating these videos for you that are free on YouTube just as a way to help um, you and show you what I'm working on. So the remove tool did a pretty nice job. I'm going to go over it one more time and see if it continues to kind of clean this area up. This is a new AI based remove tool in Photoshop, and it's just been outstanding in how it can remove and focus on the areas. So I think it did OK. What I'd like to do is I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go back to my blur and I'm going to put it on white and grab my brush. I'm going to take the opacity all the way up. I want to remove the blur. Let's make sure we're on our layer here. And actually I need to be on black. Sorry about that. We want to reveal what's underneath. So I'm just going to come around and reveal this area instead of having it blurry. That way we can try the remove tool again. I think that it might work a lot better. So let's do command option shift the letter E to get our new layer. Now I'm going to come down and get that remove tool. And we're going to come around, keep our hand on the um, trackpad or mouse. I use a trackpad and I love it. All right, we're going to come in here and just get this all filled in. I think now it's going to be more visible, the pixels to remove. And I think I'm going to stop right there. All right. Now I could have done this remove first and then applied my blur filter. I just chose to do it um, last. I was really debating if I wanted to keep it since it is realistic to the scene or if I want to delete it. But I want to just see um, how well Photoshop does getting rid of it. And this is pretty much what it did before. I don't think removing the blur made a big difference. 
just going to come around here again and see if it cleans it up a little bit more. And may have to use the clone tool. Did a, did a pretty good job considering. So yeah, let's just kind of clean this up. We'll see what it does. So not, not too bad. It's still going to need some extra work. So I think I would just continue coming in and working with it to get that area cleaned up. I'd need to clean up this edge. And it may even be best to go and at this point use the um, spot heel to come in and clean this up. We could also just use the um, clone tool, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, I don't like how that how that did. So I think I would go use the clone get a smaller brush and let's just come in and click the option. Yeah. And I'm just going to clone this area. I'm in really tight. And maybe come down here. And I think that it's not too bad. So let's come around with it. So you just have to decide what you're happy with. And sometimes I found with Photoshop, you can just start from scratch again and the remove tool may do a better job the second time. Um, sometimes it does better than others. So let's click the option here. And again, I'm just using the clone to kind of come around, bring in the colors and make this natural. The clone tool is one of my favorite for cleaning up, especially areas like this. So I'm going to go grab this green. Now I am going to add some more creative elements to this image. So I'm not worried about this being perfect. I'm just going to smooth out that little bud and smooth out this area. Let's just come in here. And maybe grab this edge just bring it up around this flower. Still don't like this dark edge. So I'm just taking my time to clone. You can fast forward this part of the video if you want. Um, I'm just going to go around and keep working on this edge. So I would just continue to modify that, soften that edge. And you just have to decide what you're happy with. I'm really, to be honest, not happy with that at all. So if we take it off, there's our flower. I um, I could try the um, remove tool in a small dose. So I'm gonna go ahead and go backwards and play with this again using the remove tool in just small little sections to see if I can get it cleaned up. But I really think the best option is to go back and just give it some of the blur like we had before. So I want to reveal the blur. I'm going to do it at about 50% and let's flip it to white to reveal that blur. And I think just softening it is all it needs because it was part of the scene. I can also soften around the bud. And I think then it's really hardly noticeable and it does tell the story of the roses. So in some instances, if the remove tool doesn't work, we could have cloned it. We could take little bits and play with it. Um, we could try to copy this leaf and paste it in here. But sometimes just the blur feature will make a big impact. Now, the last thing that I want to do to this image is I do want to add a little bit of um, oil paint. So I'm going to do another stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. I'm going to come in and do Filter stylize oil paint and when I do oil paint I like to have my brush all the way over to the right my lighting to the left it's going to just give a really soft subtle amount of detail and what I can do then is bring the opacity down maybe about 70 percent 50 percent I can apply a mask 
and I'm going to flip it to black, opacity at about 50%, and I'm just going to remove a little bit of that oil paint in the center to bring out some of the detail. Now for this image, you could also go in and add some um, texture and topaz. There's so many things that we could do with this image, but I think I like it like that. I do want to do a um, selective color adjustment. So I'm going to go to selective color and let's try the reds. I want to add a little bit more, yeah, pop of peach to it to just give it a little bit of pop. Let's go to the greens look good. Um, let's do yellow and also add a little bit, yeah, of magenta. I just want to really get that true color. So I love to work with selective color, just bringing that out. Maybe not, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit is all I want. Okay, guys, so that is editing this rose image. Um, we can take it now and do File, Save. It's going to take it back into Lightroom. And from there, we can make any other tweaks. So if I wanted to darken the um, vignette, I could do that. I could also add any clarity or texture or details that I want. I really like the softness of it, and I love the blur effect. Let's compare it. It looks like it's saving it. Let's compare it to the original and show you the final outcome. So I'll be right back in just a second with the comparison images. Okay, so here is our before image on the... Let me get our active image up. So this was the image... before and now we have our edited image here and so as I drag around you can see the detail that the blur that I was able to add so you can see it just added a little bit more blur but it was able to keep the detail so this is the image here and if I scroll over you can see just a little bit more blur but I still have all that detail in the center. Now the image that I'll switch to this being the active image, this was the lens baby image. So look at how my blur matches pretty close, but I have the detail in the image. So if you shoot with a lens baby, it is such a great lens for getting this softness, but sometimes there's a flower or a subject, maybe a person that you need the detail. So feel free to shoot at those higher f-stop numbers, but then you can always go in and add some blur really easy in post-processing. So again, the image on the right is the lens baby. You can see the softness, but shooting with the lens baby at f6 to f8, I'm able to get more detail, and I just went back and added that blur. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will try using blur to enhance your images. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next creative editing video. I will be posting these weekly as I edit images in my home studio. Thanks, everybody.